Hello, parents. Welcome to our Wednesday Talks, where we talk all things about how we can help our smart, gifted 2E kids um, really live their best childhood, right? So they can have happy and healthy childhoods and so they can grow into resilient, balanced adults. And so, so excited to have you here today. Um, our topic for today is self-control. So we're going to be talking about the best kept secret for developing self-control in our kids. And this is without having to rely on therapy. Therapy's good, we're all about therapy, um, medication. The things that you already do to help your kids are very, very good. But the thing is, is that we need to um, focus on developing strategies that are very specific to our specific kids. Because the fact is, um, what works for one family won't work for another. What works for one kid won't work for another. And sometimes what works for a while stops working. And so we always need to be ready with these new strategies and these um, new ideas that kind of go back to these main concepts of self-control, self-regulation, critical thinking, all the things that'll help our kids be the best that they can absolutely be, right? So um, in Nature Matters Academy, we really value happy, healthy kids and happy, healthy childhoods. And um, not only do our kids get that through things like self-control, but they also get it by getting outside, playing, being kids, and even leveraging what they like to learn about um, in order to develop these skills. So we're gonna be talking a little bit about that today. So my opening question for you, you guys, please put it in the comments is um, what's your number one strategy for developing self-control in your kids? Go ahead and type that in the comments. And then also just let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, give us a city, give us a state, give us a country, wherever it is that you're tuning in from. We'd love to know. So I'd like to start off by telling a, a quick, but a really, really powerful story. So my youngest son is four years old. And um, when we first went to a specialty pediatrician for the types of concerns that we have with our kids, um, she immediately recognized ADHD and sensory processing disorder. Now he hasn't been actually diagnosed yet with ADHD. Um, he has with sensory, but not with ADHD. And um, it's simply because of his age, right? But here's a really interesting conversation we had a couple of months ago that really kind of points to this idea of some kids just have a harder time with self-control than others and it's how their brain works, it's their physiology, and um, we just need to learn different strategies to help them with that. So we're, we're you know, I'm tucking them in to bed one night, and as I'm tucking them in, um, my youngest is like, you know, mom, sometimes my brain tells me to do things that I don't wanna do. And I'm like, well, you know, what do you mean by that? Tell me more about that. And he's like, you know, there are things that are bad, and I know I shouldn't do them, and I don't want to do them, but sometimes I do them anyway because my brain tells me to do it and it won't stop telling me to do it. And, um, you know, out of the mouth of babes, right? We, it's this idea that kids that are so young, they are speaking kind of their most purest truth. Sometimes they're speaking, um, you know, fantasy land. But this was a very, very clear moment of truth. And the fact that um, his, he has, he's impulsive, right? The ADHD, he is impulsive and he has a hard time turning it off and he has a hard time controlling it. And so let's talk a little bit about, um, let's talk a little bit about what is self-control. So let's go ahead and define these because we've heard self-control and self-regulation. And the fact is sometimes we don't know um, really what the difference is between the two of them. So we're talking about self-control. We're talking about inhibiting impulses. So it's very much a binary response. It's a yes or a no. I do the thing or I don't do the thing. And self-control is on or off. So think about it this way. You've had a really long day at work or a really long day homeschooling the kids or being a stay-at-home parent, whatever that looks like for you. And the kids are finally in bed and you open up the freezer and there it is a brand new tub of your favorite flavor of ice cream, right? And um, you're about to grab the tub, but you're like, oh my gosh, I just started this diet and I'm on it for another two weeks and it's no ice cream, no sugar. I can't eat this ice cream. So self-control is putting the ice cream back in the fridge and deciding not to have it. All right. So self-control is very, it's binary. It's yes or no. Whereas self-regulation is um, basically all about identifying the cause and reducing the magnitude of the impulse. So hey, let me give you an example here. Um, to kind of put it in the same context. So again, you've had a really long day at work or a long day homeschooling or being a stay-at-home parent, whatever that looks like for you. And um, you come and you, um, well, you, you recognize, right? You recognize it's been a long day. You recognize that there is ice cream in the freezer and that you're going to want to eat that ice cream, but you just started a diet and you don't want to run your diet. You've already lost a pound and you don't want to mess that up. And so what do you do? 
you go and you drive to the local smoothie shop and instead of eating ice cream, you go and get a banana strawberry smoothie with no added sugar. And so that is the difference between self-control versus self-regulation. Self-control is yes or no. Self-regulation is like, all right, I know that today stressed me out. I know that I'm going to want to eat ice cream. I think it's okay if I have some fruit, but I am going to, um, you know, kind of make it a treat and make it more healthy than it would be if it was ice cream. So um, those are kind of the differences there. And I think that's really incredibly important for us to realize for our kids is that sometimes self-control is important. Like running into the street, they need self-control. They need to not run in the street. That's not a gray area, right? Um, but things like, um, oh my gosh, running and playing on, on, you know, the higher equipment on the playground, you know, maybe their self-control or their self-regulation is, you know, I'm going to go tell mom that I'm going to go play on this higher part of the playground and I'm going to ask her to spot me. And so that would be an example there. So what is the best kept secret for developing self-control in our kids? And you guys, it's simple. It's something that you probably already intuitively do as parents. It's probably something that you already intuitively know. But here's the thing. There's a difference between something being intuitive and you're kind of doing it on the side versus doing it regularly and practicing it with your kids and being purposeful and intentional about developing this skill. So um, basically the secret weapon, the secret sauce to this, right, is putting them in situations where they have an opportunity to practice self-control. And it needs to be in a safe and supportive environment. So if your kids go to public school, private school, um, if you're homeschooled, but you go to a co-op a couple times a week, whatever that looks like for you, um, your kids are going to have plenty of opportunities to develop self-control. But the thing is, the environment may not be safe. The environment may not be supportive, especially for kids like ours that are a little bit harder. You know, they're a little bit more high, hyperactive than the other kids. They talk constantly. They're constantly correcting the teacher because it turns out the teacher is wrong. Um, or maybe they have some facts that aren't quite as clear as our kids need them to be. Right. And so um, they are practicing self-control very, very often, but it's not always in a safe and supportive environment. Um, depending on what their teacher looks like, what their school looks like. But at home, we have the ability to make it a safe and supportive environment. We have ability to create that and set that up for our kids so that we can set them up for success. And um, we have the opportunity to give them ways to practice self-control, right? And um, we can, um, there are a lot of ways to do this. And you can kind of find these in your day-to-day -day rhythms. Um, honestly, I I'm, I'm big on having adventures with my kids. And when I say adventures, I don't mean like climbing Mount Everest or, you know, necessarily going rock climbing every weekend. All oh, that's great. And it's super fun. But we work on finding those adventures just in the day to day kind of simple parts of life. And one of my favorite self-control um, activities um, that is so, so funny to watch online is the marshmallow test. So psychologists have been using the marshmallow test for years to um, basically test the ability, the self-control, the level of self-control of various kids. And they have actually um, done studies, like longitudinal studies over, you know, entire kids' childhoods and even into adulthood. And they can show that kids who um, don't have self-control when they're younger and don't develop that as they get older, they actually don't do as well in their careers and a lot of other things. So it's a really important skill that we need to practice. So why not have some fun? Um, look up marshmallow tests on Google. Um, do it with your kids. Um, do it in different environments. I think it would be really interesting to do it indoors, like at the kitchen table, right? And then go outside and do it and see if they are better able to manage their impulse control outside when there's so many different things going on in so many different ways that they can kind of fill their attention buckets and compare those. Because we know through research that just being outdoors, especially for kids with ADHD, but also autism, sensory processing, being outdoors helps kind of fill their bucket so they're better able to calm themselves, relax, they're better able to manage self-control, they have better self-discipline, there's all different words for this, self-regulate, right? And so um, that is a fun way to practice self-control in the short term. And you can do lots of other things like that. It doesn't have to be the marshmallow test, there are so many things that you can do, um, but those are kind of short-term fixes. Now, um, when we talk about long-term strategies for developing self-control, um, here's, here's one thing that we love to do. We love to take nature walks. 
And um, here's the thing. Sometimes our kids can complain, right? We take a nature walk Monday through Friday. We're outside doing something on a daily basis. If we miss a day because we have so many activities going on, then we'll do it on a Saturday or a Sunday. But we get outside together in nature and we take these nature walks. And sometimes they complain. <laughs> the oldest one never does because he loves it. I mean, that is his jam. The younger one's like, I'm tired and I'm all these other things and complaining. And, um, you know, one thing that we can do, which we haven't done yet, but I might start doing is doing kind of um, a, a, an accountability chart where we, we put a chart up and every day that we walk as a family and everyone comes with a good attitude, then we um, at the end of the month, maybe both of the kids get $10. And I take them to Target or to another store and they can spend that money. And so it's a way to reward them. We, in our family, we do rewards, whatever that looks like. Um, it's going to look very different for each family. It may not be money. It may not be food for you. It may be quality time with parents. It may be a special experience like going to the zoo, whatever that looks like for you. Um, but building like resilience and self-control over time, being like, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to have a wonderful time with my family today. It's going to be 15 minutes. And then if I do this all month long at the end of the month, I get this great result and they are practicing and developing self-control over time. Once we have it scheduled, they are expecting it and know it's part of the day. We have charts. We are a charts family reward um, family too. Yeah. Teresa, um, she, she is so good about setting up those systems with her kids so that they know what to expect. Because at the end of the day, if they don't know what to expect, nothing's going to work. And that's why um, routines and schedules are so valuable for our type of kids. They need to know what's coming. They need to prepare for it. And they need to know what will come after. And um, another powerful strategy to kind of dovetail on this, and we might actually talk about this next week, is the idea of reflecting. Reflecting as a family and talking about all the good things that happen is a great way for kids to kind of develop that self-regulation because they know what they enjoy, they know what they don't enjoy, but what they can do to make those things more exciting. And they really start to help themselves, which is what we want, right? Because if our kids grow up and they go up to college and they get married and they get a career and they do all the things and they can't control themselves, um, their marriage is going to fall apart. They're, they're going to lose their career. All these things are going to happen because they don't have self-control and self-regulation. And both of those are incredibly important to developing resilience. So um, speaking of resilience, we have our boot camp coming up um, here in a couple of weeks. And so, um, Teresa, if you don't mind adding that um, link here in the comments, but it's naturebrownersacademy.com backslash bootcamp sign up. And we would love for you guys to join us on that. We're going to be talking about back talk meltdowns, um, lack of focus. That's a huge one. And, um, and all the things, right? All the things that we as parents of these smart, gifted, two-y kids um, that we struggle with. Really, these are problems that all parents struggle with. And so we want to help you guys to um, really to start working on and developing strategies that work for your individual kids because again, we know what works for my kids doesn't work for Teresa's kids. Um, you know, what worked last week may not work next month. And so we have to have enough tools in our toolbox to be able to kind of change and shift things as we go. And that's what you're going to get in our boot camp. And then plus you're going to be with like-minded families and like-minded parents. You're going to be brainstorming, developing strategies together, developing new friendships of other people that actually get it. Um, that understands um, why your kids having a meltdown because of, you know, something that seems relatively insignificant to everybody else. So we want to invite you to our boot camp, and um, it's, it's a great time. It's a great time of learning and sharing. And again, what makes us different, guys, is that we focus on leveraging STEM and nature. So our kids are learning other things. They're learning self-control. They're learning to self-regulate. They're learning critical thinking. They're developing resilience. But guess what? They're doing it all while getting outside having a heck of a good time in learning something new and they're practicing their STEM. And that's really what we try to focus on is helping our students um, really just dig deep on the things that they already love to do, dig deep on things that they want to learn more about. And in the process of that, we're learning all these important life skills. So that's what makes us different than from therapy. That's what makes us different from all these other programs that you see online. We're not just addressing the issues. We are giving them this holistic, really healthy, really fun, engaging childhood. And with these experiences, 
um, we train the parents and we help you to do all those other things on the back end. So anyway, I'm so happy to be here with you guys today. If you have any questions, um, be sure to DM me or leave them in the comments below and tag me and tag Teresa. And I um, hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon. And go and practice some self-control. Whatever you do, post it here in this group. We would love to see it. All right. Bye.